Hold on, boy. You're doing good. How do you get that nice transition between this red and down into the darker red, into the blue and red roan? You know, that's a that's a uh, something that's hard to make up in your mind, even if you've seen it. I was the kid in your class that could draw. And there was, you know, there were two or three others in school, but we could, that was what I did all the time. I drew all the time in school. And then, uh, in fact, to the point where a teacher one time sent a letter home to my parents and said, could you please ask Jim and encourage him not to do drawings of the students and particularly the, the teachers while they're giving their lessons? So I'm just blocking in the basic shapes right now, and uh, I don't know if the leg positions are going to stay that way or not. It just depends on how I do. I'm establishing where the withers are. The withers, as we know, the withers start way behind this front leg. Everybody puts them up here, but that's wrong. It's here, and this back line goes down like this back line goes like that. The withers come out of that, you know, to here, and they connect, and the shoulder comes down. I've loved horses since I was born, I guess, and horses have been my muse. And it was fueled and kept going, I mean, by my love of Will James' books and illustrations, illustrated books. And the Saturday Evening Post, I, I used to look forward to this so much. Every week, the Saturday Evening Post would come with all these great illustrators in it. And it's why my pain, I'm sure that that, and I look so forward to that. And then, then I became a reader because all the great writers were writing these stories that the illustrations were supporting. You know, so you'd have Harold von Schmidt or somebody like that doing a great Western drawing, and I'd be looking at the drawing, and then I think well, and it would have a caption, and I and I think well, that that's really interesting. So I'd end up reading the story as a ten-year-old, you know, or at a young age, um, and learn to be a reader and a, and a voracious reader. So I'll grab some of that reddish color, and I'll just start putting it in, and. That's what, you know, it's way too red from what I want eventually, but I'm going to paint, in this case today, for some reason, I'm going to paint, um, I'm going to mix my colors on the canvas. And I don't, sometimes I do that, sometimes I mix them in the box, sometimes I do both. I'll probably end up doing both. But when you mix, it's a little bit lighter up there. So... I put some blue in there, too much white got in there, but we'll get rid of that in a minute. And when I was 18, my folks asked me, they'd heard about Famous Artists Correspondence School, which was all those great illustrators. You know, it's Her Albert Dorn and Norman Rockwell and, and uh, Harold von Schmidt and, and uh, Lukens. And, and uh, there were really all these Saturday Evening Post illustrators got together and formed a correspondence school. You know, it was the kind of thing where you'd had a month and you were to, you had a task and the, the chapter on that month and you would, maybe it was on form and maybe it was on landscape or something light. It might have been on the human body shape and all that sort of thing. You did drawings to send them in. They cr critique it and send it back to you. That's why when my, my subject matter, my, my paintings uh, focus on the subject matter. In other words, a cowboy or the, or the, is the main subject, and he's also the main focus of the painting and the main proportion in that painting, as an illustrator would do, because that's what I respond to and that's what I grew up with, you know, and I still like that point of view. And, and, but it was all predicated and instigated by my interest in those early illustrators. And you know how those illustrations are, you know, the, the guys there, you know, Willie Gunn and you know, the damsel, and, you know, all that stuff. They're right up front. I'm still looking for keys, position keys. You know, see how that subtle blanket comes up on top of the withers and then it comes down. And it doesn't come straight down, it comes down at kind of an angle. 
And all of us that are around horses, we know that. I'm basically working with three colors. This red, and I'll add, um, there's a red, yellow, and blue. They're just the earthy tones of it. Yellow ochre rather than yellow, yellow, cadmium yellow. And uh, my red is really in a red orange, which is a burnt sienna versus a cadmium burnt red herb, cadmium orange. And um, my blue, I, instead of a, of a, of a really blue-green kind of thing, thale blue, which I like to work with, it's more, of, it's an ultramarine blue. And so I went to school and I took one art class in college and uh, it was too esoteric for me and I wasn't mature enough to realize that I could use what they were teaching later on. I, I just didn't, I didn't make that connection. But I, so I went to work just doing other things. And um, I got into computers in the very early age when the computers were as big as this room because I had a math aptitude. But I, I started to paint on the side. In the middle 60s, the CAs started. And I saw these guys that loved horses and cattle and they were painting horses and cattle. And I was painting horses and cattle, but I was over here doing it. And they were already recognized, I was just, uh, starting, you know, I mean, I was a, I didn't know anything, but I thought one day I thought, what am I going to do with this? Um, and I thought about, I'd read a book called Psycho Cybernetics, and they were talking in the Psycho Cybernetics, they were talking about going down a path, and then things come up, and you drift off, but you keep coming back, you know, and keep keep on your path. And also that while you're doing that, if you choose whatever you're choosing to do at the time, you immerse yourself in it. And in my case, I said to myself, well, okay, I'm going to start going to art galleries and really studying. And I'm going to, and I'm going to, and I'm going to pursue my cowboying as much as I can. And I'm going to paint or draw, I'm going to paint actually 20 minutes a day, no matter what happens. I really kept to that schedule. Kept painting, kept painting, kept painting. Lo and behold, a gallery in Carmel sees my work, wants to, I went in with my work and showed it to them. And they said, yeah, we'll carry it. So they did in Carmel, California. This is in the early 70s. And I was floored. And they sold some. Not right away, you know, here and there. Had an art, went, got invited to go to, or submitted to an art show they said, yes, we'd like to, for you to be in our art show. Nothing sold. Everybody's disappointed, me particularly. And, um, but we just kept going, plugging along. And gallery, added another couple of galleries. Finally, in 1975, packed up the family, moved to a, to a ranch outside Durango, leased the main house on that ranch. And then I be, became a full-time gallery painter. I had the greatest schedule. I'd get up at, um, you know, four or five o'clock in the morning and go out and help them feed. This is during cabin season. And then, of course, the mother cows, there were 300 of them, were out in the trees and out in the pastures. And um, I'd saddle up, uh, I'd paint from, I'd go out and help them feed. And then I'd come in and have breakfast and I'd paint from seven in the morning till noon. And at noon, I'd have lunch and then I'd saddle up and ride till dark. And I'd ride looking for problems, you know. So, and then, so that was my life for 25 years with that family. And the family grew up with it, and I grew up with it, and the, I painted what I was doing. And I, that was a terrific life, you know. So I'm going to, now I'm going to position him back to the original position or close to it. And I'm going to look for highlights and lowlights, and then we're going to be pretty much done. I do pen and inks. I draw every night. I'll be watching television or something, and I'm always drawing. And, uh, and I'll do some pen and inks now and then. I rarely do a watercolor anymore. And I really like to paint in oils, and I, even out in the field. But we know there's a shadow. We're seeing a shadow here. And we're seeing the shadow come down. 
here. You've got to be fairly accurate now. It goes in front of the candle, so I've got to move it over to there and come down. I'm, I'm uh, pretty much a traditionalist in terms of, um, uh, and you can see it in my work, that uh, uh, I stick with the Western, well, I stick with, with the landscape that's presented to me. And, and that dictates what, what your color schemes are going to be, you know, for the most part. We, we, we enhance them, hopefully, but um, we're pretty much dictated by, your, by the landscape around you that you're setting your subject matter in. Okay, so we got a concho up here. We don't want to go nuts. We put a super white concho, and if it comes out super white, I'll knock it down. When it comes to um, the accoutrements of the, of, the pain, of the writer, we'll say in a painting, I'm not showing off my collection of shafts and saddles and that sort of thing. In other words, it's not a vehicle for me uh, to depict uh, the, the accoutrements of the West. What I'm after is the gesture of the West and the, and the ambience of the West and the feel of the West. What I'm after is, I like, I'm really after things like how that horse is cocking his ear, like that, I've got a, that painting on the wall over there. They found a calf, the horse is turned away from it because the guy's kind of put his hand over there, so his horse is turned away from it, but his eye and his ear are starting, they, he knows where that calf is. And anybody who's ridden cows knows that gesture, and that's what I'm after. I'm after that gesture. I'm really... Um, unapologetic about it because I believe in it for me personally it's just for me um, uh, I'm really always looking for that you know um, I'm not I don't I don't have guys shooting guns at things you know fast draw in the middle of the street I mean I went to all the movies I loved them I was a Roy Rogers fan you know I loved all that stuff but um, mine is Basically, what's going on out there in the out there in the range? And then I could take some white and some gray and make a make a ring. And I'll make a buckle here. Over the years, I'd often thought, you know, a guest ranch or dude ranch. Um, might be an opportunity for some controlled environments from where I could paint on location and photograph on location and kind of control what's going on. When I'm at a major ranch, for instance, I'll go to, I'll, I just, I go every spring to one particular, I go to a few ranches, but this one particular ranch, they'll, they'll brand 1,500 calves that morning. They're done by one o'clock. We start at daybreak, but they're, 1,500 calves branding, they're done by one. We're eating lunch by two. But I can't say, hey, oh, wait, uh, let's do that again. So I thought, well, maybe I wonder if a dude rancher or guest ranch would work. This opportunity came up, and they wanted to know if I would come up and paint on their dude ranch. And I said, sure, I'd love to, hoping that what I was looking for would actually happen, that, that I could control the situation, you know. Sure enough, the dude ranches that I knew of, that I respected and really liked, were the ones that had, still had pole corrals, still had log cabins, still had log lodges, the old great log lodges, the fireplace, the whole thing, going saddles on the rafters, you know, good artwork, all this stuff. And this place had it. They've been in business since 1918. And, and so I was right. I was so thrilled that I was right for a change. You know, the, one of the things that I hoped would happen actually, or existed, hoped would exist, actually existed. <laughs>